Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Welcome to the eighth and the last session of the ICESA Surety Week. My name is Richard Wolf. I'm the executive director of ICESA and honored to moderate this panel. Now, with more than 3,500 registrations for the week, and up to now, more than 2,000 live views, it's clear that Surety Week is doing what it's intended to do, promote the surety product, share knowledge, and promote this practice. Now, the topic of this session is dig digitalization. We will hear speakers from very different parts of the surety world, an industry participant, a broker, and a representative of a service company, each with their own angle, which I trust together will form a pic an entire picture of where we are at the moment. Now, the importance of digitalization is clearly to remove bottlenecks in the process of underwriting and distribution, reduce frictional costs, and add transparency and security. You're encouraged to put questions to the speakers by using the button at the bottom right of your screen, showing questions. Uh, and at the end of this presentation, you'll also find some handouts for you to download. The session will be recorded for you to review. And of course, to show your colleagues, your clients, your friends, your spouse, everyone who is interested, because that's what the session is for, sharing the knowledge. And the link to all recordings will be sent out after, uh, after this weekend, probably, to all who have registered. Now, having said that, I'd like to welcome uh, the members of the panel. Greg Davenport, Senior Vice President with Liberty Mutual Surety, based in Seattle. So spare a thought for Greg, please. It's six o'clock in the morning, it is. It. <laughs> now, amongst his many responsibilities, Greg is deeply involved uh, on behalf of the industry in the blockchain project that we're running with the Risk Stream Collaborative as chair as of risk streams surety advisory committee and greg will tell you all about this in a moment also on your screen you see kai stitzel who is head of surety at aeon responsible for aeon's surety broking activities in germany austria and switzerland before moving to broking kai worked for rmv insurance as a surety underwriter and last but not least Wouter van Schijk is the head of product, responsible for product development and customer solution within digital vault services. He works closely together with their customers and strategic partners in the European rollout. Wouter has a rich history in digital innovation in the IT and the payments uh, industry. Welcome, welcome to the members of the panel. And to get things started, I would love to hand over to Greg uh, to tell us all about what he's doing with Restream. Greg, the floor is yours. Thank you, Richard, for the kind introduction. And uh, hello, everyone. It's good to be with you for Surety Week. I've uh, been looking forward to updating you on the uh, great progress that we've been making on the blockchain initiative, which to remind you, our vision is to do for surety bonds and powers of attorney where they're applicable what was done for stocks and bonds over 50 years ago. So if you can go to the next slide, please. So for those of you that have heard me speak before about this, as a reminder, ours is the largest blockchain initiative, we believe in not just the surety industry, but the entire insurance industry. And I see said gives, gets full credit for being the one to lead this initiative first. Uh, then inviting others to join to where now we have a consortium that involves over 170 global organizations, which includes 63 sureties, five reinsurers, 83 brokerages, and has the support of eight industry associations around the world, including the Surety and Fidelity Association of America, the National Association of Surety Bond Producers, NASBP, the Pan American Surety Association, PASA, and the Surety Association of Canada. We're now on to our second proof of concept with participants representing about 75% of market share globally. 
and those participants include at least 10 ICSA members and our outreach continues. In fact, just since the first of the year, we've had introductions with two surety system providers in Europe and one in Asia Pacific. So the value proposition for sureties and brokers, as you can see on the, on the right, is compelling because it, we estimate that the cost of paper bonds with wet signatures is three times more than a digital bond. And digital bonds also reduce the cycle time from execution to final delivery to the principal and onto the beneficiary. And these figures do not yet account for the administrative cost to the beneficiaries. It's safe to assume that the cost for them to administer paper bonds is greater than to administer digital bonds and the chances of fraud are higher with paper bonds too. If you can go to the next slide, please. So we've actually had um, some expansion of our scope and the capabilities that this solution is going to offer since I spoke with you last. Our approach has been to tackle the challenge in steps. First to post and authenticate digital bonds on the blockchain and then to address paper bonds or, or PDFs. Uh, the digital bonds executed by sureties or the broker system of choice will be posted to the Canopy network. That's a network that Riskstream manages. Um, this is the digital bond part uh, over on the left of the slide. The, the uh, bond and power of attorney if applicable uh, will be minted as an NFT, a non-fungible token on the blockchain giving the bond documents a level of authenticity that goes beyond any that exists today to our knowledge. Beneficiaries will be able to authenticate the bond, the bond documents using their system of choice. That's really key to this. Uh, their, their bond execution system of choice, whether um, it's a third party system or one that's, that's proprietary that many sureties and some brokers have. Um, then then the, the authentication will be through a QR code or a URL, or, or again, through a system of choice that the beneficiary has. And the surety broker and all the G will all be able to receive a copy of the fully executed bond with the digital signatures. So again, that's a capability that doesn't really exist today because the bond copies that might be available uh, to the surety don't have the principal signature. So in this case, they would uh, where applicable. So we've been focused on that authentication piece for digital bonds first, but the question keeps coming up, what about the paper bonds that represent 95% of the documents today? And so we asked ourselves, what do digital bonds and electronic or paper bonds, again, it could be a PDF that's emailed or it could be a paper bond with a wet signature, what do they have in common? Well, it, all of them at some point are registered in the surety system of record. So some sureties around the world allow obligees today to verify that the bonds in their system by showing them a hyperlink or a QR code on the bond. By allowing verification through our blockchain solution, there will be a single source for verification and that will encourage more sureties to provide a validation capability. So our Canopy blockchain solution will provide both authentication of bond documents if they're digital and verification that the bond obligation is registered in the surety system. On the, ver on the verification side, if there's a PDF and if that's uploaded again by the system that executes the bond, uh, even if it's a paper bond, uh, if there's a PDF that's output, that would be posted to the network but once all the G's see that they can also authenticate the bond and power of attorney upon delivery too, once they see that that capability exists in our solution, we believe it should encourage them to move from paper bonds to, to just digital bonds. Uh, so this approach should also encourage broader participation in the consortium because again, every surety, whether they have their own system or they subscribe to a system, at some point registers the bond shows that it's their liability or exposure in their system. If you can go to the next slide, please. So here's a timetable to uh, show where we are in our milestones. So we really came out of the gate strong uh, the first of the year uh, because we have created a, a pretty assertive schedule 
so we can get the proof of concept done. At first, we thought that we would only get the authentication proof of concept done and then follow it with the verification proof of concept, but just in the last week, one and possibly two surety solution providers have stepped up to say they'll prove the concept for verification because they provide systems for sureties while at the same time uh, some solution providers and in some cases the same one have agreed to prove the concept of authentication of the bond documents themselves so those solution providers we've been encouraging them to do it so frankly, to save the sureties from having to uh, plan and put resource to this right now. But the, but the proof of concept will be then used and available to sureties and all other solution providers. Um, but uh, to, to prove this is truly a global initiative, those solution providers that are proving the concept are from the US, but also from Canada and from Europe. And they're in discussions with Kaleido Kaleido is the uh, blockchain expert company that Riskstream uses for their development. Um, they're, they're in um, discussions as we speak this week to finalize what will be required for a system to post that digital bond to the network, um, have Kaleido minted as an NFT, have notification, and then the authentication on the back end. And they're also working to define what that means for the verification part to have uh, a, a, the system of record to be able to pass through to the blockchain evidence that the bond is the exposure of the surety. So as you can see with the schedule here, we're targeting to have the both proof of concepts completed and tested by the end of the first quarter or into early April. Why? A couple reasons, but one is because there's an opportunity to uh, communicate about this and hopefully even show these demos at the various industry association meetings that typically uh, begin in April and run through um, the June timeframe, so through the second quarter, including the meetings that ICISA uh, has. So we're very hopeful that there'll be something uh, very tangible to at the very least announce, but we hope to even be able to show that at the industry events that are coming up. You can go to the ne next slide, please. Another key reason that we're really being aggressive on the timeline is because we want to, of course, engage beneficiaries, get their feedback, make sure that this is a good value proposition for them. So first and foremost, our strategy has been, let's agree on what the solution is and what it will do how it will work. So that's what we're doing now. Align with the system providers and the working group, the surety working group for Riskstream, on what that value proposition is for beneficiaries so that then we can go together to select a few beneficiaries or intermediaries together to explain what we're doing, hopefully communicate the value, the value to them, get their feedback on any adjustments that we have, and then provided that all comes together as we hope, then the next step would be to actually get into funding model, uh, look at what it will take to build it, and then it should lead to production so we would have a live and working blockchain solution for both authentication of surety bonds and verification of surety bonds. So if you haven't participated in the working groups yet, but this sparks your interest, please reach out to ICISA or to me and we'll get you connected with the consortium. So thank you and I'll, I'll take questions uh, later on as, as we go. Well, thank you so much, Greg. And I don't know about the people online, but it makes me really proud that we are the largest blockchain project in the insurance industry, given that we're pretty tiny, right? If uh, if you compare us to the property and casualty industry. So well done. If you would have shown me this five years ago, I would have said, that's a wonderful project for 2050 or something like that. <laughs> and the other benefit, now we all know what a non-fungible token is, right? <laughs> well, thank you so much. And I would like to pass to Kai, to Kai Stutzel, 
who as a broker would uh, represent the voice of the customer. And those are the people we should never forget. So Kai, if you want to switch on, the floor is yours. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Richard. Thank you for your introduction and welcome to this last session of IC Security Week. Um, yeah, let me take you with me and let us spend some time about uh, our client perspective when we think about digitalization of uh, surety business. So when I'm talking about digitalization, then I have the perspective of our clients in the DAF region. That means uh, Germany, Austria and Switzerland. Uh, so please remember that when I'm talking about this, it's, it's echo status quo and uh, that it's more the a European uh, view or especially. Uh, so I'm not sure whether it, it might be a little bit different in other, uh, under other countries or areas. So what Greg told us uh, before, uh, the perspective of surety business on blockchain, I guess we're talking about a project um, that that will need further time uh, to be introduced and also and that is much more important accepted by all involved parties um, but but i would like to talk a little bit more about where are we now and what do we see in the surety market so uh as uh, richard told you uh, I, I was the underwriter at the leading surety providers and five years ago, ago digitalization was something to convert a paper into PDF and send it on email. Uh, I'm not, I, I don't know what, how it was in your, or, or how it is in, in your country, but uh, here in Germany, it was and still is that way. That's digitalization in, in any way. So um, uh, at that time with the surety provider, we were totally electrified to send uh, bonds uh, via email. Um, but as we are in Germany, uh, as sending bonds via email was not, was not as easy as we thought because we had to look for a secure transfer and uh, data protection and data privacy, which are still very, very important uh, issues. And maybe that the blockchain can, can help uh, in the future much more. But um, that led us to the point where we had to transfer the email encrypted and send the password for description in a, in a PDF with a second mail. And the process to produce both mails took so much time that it was a, a faster way from the underwriting side to say, okay, I take the paper and put it uh, to the post map and, it, and, and then it was gone. So this is not what I think uh, digitalization should be. Uh, and that was five years ago. And uh, today still uh, the provider sends me still mails encrypted with a second mail. Uh, where the password to uh, encrypt the, the PDF. So this is still still alive and we, we see it um, almost every day that digitalization in, in this specific uh, uh, area is uh, to send uh, a paper via mail in a PDF. Um, Probably the German market or Germany itself is not the champion in digitalization. Everyone who has uh, who has been in Germany and took the train or the car to drive from one city to another knows what I'm talking about, uh, having a video call um, without interruption or anything like that. Uh, even a phone call is quite, quite, uh, quite hard to do. So, um, but we, we, we need to speed up the business and help our clients in their daily business. Uh, and we need solutions that are not years ahead, like probably a blockchain project. Um, our clients need help today. Uh, when we think about buzzwords like lack of special specialists, etc., we, we shouldn't spend too much time in in uh, putting paper from the left side uh, left side to the right side. Uh, and and I think that the conditions, uh, and that is much more important, that the conditions to digitalize the surety market are given because today's almost surety providers have their own web portal uh, where our clients can request a bond. That means that uh, the surety management systems of each provider, it doesn't matter if it's an insurance company or a bank, is connected to the internet. And I, in my eyes, that's the precondition of all downstream actions. So when, when you look uh, at the description of the requesting process, we see the first hurdle between the client's ERP system uh, on the slide and the web portal. Um, in most cases, um, it, it is not 
possible to connect both systems or even just with uh, lots of efforts. So the request in the web portal needs to be handmade by our clients. Uh, even all informations are in the e ERP system. So today, almost all surety providers have a digital way to, uh, to issue the bonds then in their own system. Uh, and, and the manual process begins when they send it out to the, to the client or the beneficiary. Uh, most times uh, in Germany, the, the, the bonds are sent to our clients and then the client has to, to has the next manual steps to, to go proof of bond wording. Okay, that he has to do that uh, every time. Data maintenance in his ERP system, storage of a copy, um, and then sending the bond once again, uh, please once, once back, please. Uh, thanks. Um, sending, sending uh, it to the, to the uh, beneficiary. And the beneficiary once again has to, to accept the bonds, put it in his ERP system, safekeeping and all this stuff. And th until this point, it, it's just this, this slide, uh, until this point, we already have not less than five manual steps in the process and it takes and we ask our clients and i guess that is a very very important thing we, we ask our clients how long does it take to request and release one bond in your process and and clients told us uh, it's it's definitely not less than 10 minutes for each bonds uh, sometimes there was 15 minutes sometimes also 20 minutes but each single bond takes not less than 10 minutes. And this is a lot of time in my eyes. And when you think uh, that you have to handle 1000 bonds a year, that means that the full-time employee needs one full month only for handling surety bonds, only to put the paper into the ERP system, send it to the beneficiary, send it back to the, uh, to the um, provider and all that stuff. And, and, I, and I guess, and, and probably you will agree that in a world in, in 2023, where, where we have uh, more or less self-driving cars or uh, things like that, uh, we can improve this process and digitalize, uh, digitalize this process. So maybe could, could, could we step to the next, next slide, please? Um, when we when we talk to our clients and ask them what what would your what would your um, imagine be of uh, a, a totally digitalized world in, in the surety process, they told us we would love to have all data from our ERP system through any other uh, program. I, I, I named it here Aon Surety Manager. Uh, it could be anything else. It could be DBS. I guess Walter will, will, will tell you something later about DBS. It could be we have in Germany trust log. We, it could be GTC. It, it could be anything. Uh, the main thing is that this program or this, this company or whatever it is, is connected to all surety providers. Uh, it, it should be connected to the insurance world. It should be connected to the banks that issue bonds. Um, it should be connected maybe also or, or to, to issue bonds uh, for, for parental guarantees or something like that. And the process itself should go through the system directly to the beneficiary and he should uh, read the, the data in his ERP system. So this is one work stream, real time. It shouldn't take more than, than a, a click more or less at the end. So when, when we skip back to the, the slide before, it took not less than six to 10 work days for the whole process uh, from the re first request to, to the release. This, this, this work stream took yeah, not less than five manual processes and not less than six to 10 work days. That is what our client told us. And in the, in the digitalized world, we, we would love to see that it is uh, only one work stream, uh, one once requested through through a management system, it goes to the beneficiary. And could you please skip to the next uh, slide once again? Uh, and and uh, then also vice versa. And this should be uh, the release of 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 a, of a bond. It shouldn't be more than one click. Uh, and with this click, it means. Uh, 
the beneficiary releases from his ERP system to the to the bank or the insurance company into the ERP system of uh, the the requester. So this is what our clients, where we talked about, and when when we talk about digitalization with the clients, what they said told us, and I think this is uh, very very important in all this. Uh, discussions about uh, digitalization, what is the client's need? It's, it's very important to have other issues around, but, but the main view should be uh, how the client think and what is their or what are their needs. And with these words, uh, I would love to get, get back to you, Richard. Oh. Thank you so much, Kai. I mean, you put down a clear challenge for the industry. <laughs> now we know what we need to do. Uh, and I think we all do that, right? We have to listen to what the client wants of us to have a healthy and thriving industry. And you just told us what the client wants. Thank you. Now, thank you. What is possible. And for that, I would invite Walter uh, to share his presentation with us. Walter, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you, Richard. And it's an absolute pleasure to, uh, to be here today to explain a little bit more um, about what we do to digitize um, the surety business, amongst others. Um, I've been asked to um, yeah, elaborate a little bit further on how we support this digitization um, uh, process within, within especially Europe. Um, and there are many challenges, as we already heard from Greg and from Kai. Um, Many challenges, uh, many parties involved, um, especially across uh, across the industries as well. Um, so I would only say there is no silver bullet to it. And there is no silver bullet to overcome everything. Uh, but what we can do together is take incremental steps to digitize uh, the workflows and to include all parties that, uh, that are involved. So if you would like to go to the next slide, please. And so the happy flow is when the beneficiary and the applicant or the buyer and the seller uh, obviously come to an agreement. Um, they know under which terms and under which conditions they wanna do business uh, together. The applicant, your customer, if you're a surety, request um, the surety bond on your end and you simply issue it to the beneficiary. All clear, all very simple um, in that process. The reality actually is that if we look at Every party involved, the sureties have many different customers coming from many different places, using many different systems. Um, the applicants have not only one surety, but often uh, more than five, more than 10, sometimes even more than 25. And we don't even uh, ex um, limit that to sureties. Also, banks are, are included there in different countries, in different regions, uh, with all different uh, systems that they use. And then the beneficiary, where I believe really is a um, big point that we can improve together because the beneficiary receives from even more guarantors the guarantees or the sureties um, in all kinds of different formats, um, mainly paper-based. Uh, so what the beneficiary, beneficiaries tell us is we spend so much time on getting these paper-based documents into our system so we can actually start our processing of the guarantees and the sureties that it's it's a ridiculous amount of time. Kai already said it's it's more than um, a month work for an employee just to insert everything. Well, it could be even worse if I, uh, if I follow some of the feedback from our customers. But that's the reality. That's the real challenge. Many parties involved. It's a really widespread network with many different uh, forms and standards. Uh, involved so if you can go to the next one and that's also how we defined the the challenges today and it's not only for the beneficiary also for the applicants and also for the guarantors it's highly decentralized um, often it's non-standardized uh, it's non-standardized across the different sureties it's non-standardized across the different banks how you apply for it and uh, many of these guarantors have their own portals so if you have 20 guarantors that uh, you do business with as an applicant, um, you have 20 different bank portals, which could be a challenge. And still the 
process is heavily relying on paper, on physical signatures, um, couriers that deliver it to the right place and the right person. Um, so in order to make this all a bit more efficient and a bit more digital, um, we have to overcome the challenges of the non-standardization and we have to take the steps towards a more digital form and a digital nature of, uh, of the documents that are uh, flowing around and shared with each other. And we really need to limit and minimize the manual handling of all things. So if we can simply reduce the fact of, yeah, if we can simply reduce the fact of not having to scan in a paper-based guarantee to be added to a ERP system in such regard, we already reduced quite a lot of um, effort and a, a lot of steps. And what we see um, happening and, and basically it's the biggest gap if you ask me is that the beneficiary is not actively involved in this whole process around sureties and around guarantees. Now that might be a bit of a rough statement, so don't feel, please don't feel offended there. Um, but what we see happening is that yes, he is on the receiving side, but it's always a struggle, always a um, yeah, hassle maybe even, uh, for example, to get a release um, on that guarantee to get the guarantee the physical paper to be returned to the to the guarantor um, and even on the claim side we could argue whether that's a, a really streamlined process <laughs> luckily that doesn't happen that often uh, but definitely the releases are are a pain point for for all parties involved if you can go to the next one so how we try to support and how we um, provide our services to the market is we build a system, we build a platform, an, an, an open uh, market platform and a market standard in that regard, where we connect all three parties. So the applicant, the guarantor, the beneficiary, they're all connected. Um, they can either use our uh, user interface. We have APIs available to actually automate the majority of the workflows and uh, the data exchanges. And everything is told in what we call the, the guarantee vault. So it means that by connecting these three parties together, um, we are able to provide a end-to-end -end, uh, process or an end-to-end -end life cycle of a guarantee. Um, it also means that the applicants have a standardized way of applying and requesting for sureties um, across the different guarantors uh, or even guarantees to the different banks. Um, we standardize there to a really, really high level, uh, which is all accepted by, um, by the guarantors that are working with us. So the end-to-end -end life cycle means application, issuance, post issuance, like amendments, releases, partial releases, reductions, uh, and even claims if it comes to that point. Uh, but yeah, most importantly, at the end, also the closing of the guarantee or the release of the guarantee as such. Um, with the fact that we have um, the exchanges and the data points and the workflows in a digital manner it also provides us the ability to provide real-time notifications on any change of events going on so if there's a request the guarantors immediately notified of the request and what the request is if there is an issuance towards the beneficiary the beneficiary immediately has access to the um, to the form, to the to the data sets in there, um, and they can use it however they want. So there's no manual uploading, digitization of any form of document there any anymore. And more importantly, they are always up to date about the latest latest status of the surety. Now, by all combining uh, these three parties uh, together in in yeah. Um, in a networked way, I would say, um, hey, it is possible to reduce costs, to reduce time, save time on both input and output. Um, and I believe most importantly is eliminate some of the um, manual handling steps that, that yeah, are obsolete if we, um, if we look at it. Um, so just to touch in short, there are many use cases, many workflows, many, um, uh, processes um, available today, but let me just walk you through how it works on a normal uh, or a regular use case, if you can go to the next one. So the application uh, either happens via our platform or, or directly at the guarantor, but let's, let's assume they use our platform for that. Um, they have a standardized form 
which is the same across the different uh, guarantors that are connected to us. Um, the applicant simply fills out the um, online form, uh, provides the information that they need to provide, and then it's sent to the guarantor. The guarantor receives the surety request or request for a surety. They review it, they process it. Um, if it's not in order, they simply return it immediately uh, back to the applicant. They can immediately update it and send it back to the guarantor. If you go to the next one, let's say everything is in order. Uh, the guarantor says, yes, this uh, surety I can issue. Uh, they issue it on the guarantee vault. And at that time, the applicant, and if it's decided that the beneficiary needs to receive it immediately, the, ben the beneficiary is also immediately um, notified and given access to the issued bond. Then the last one. Um, when we talk about the post issuance, it could always happen that there um, is the need for an amendment um, or a reduction takes place um, that follows the same process. A request is sent immediately to the guarantor. The guarantor processes it and notifies and gives access to the parties involved immediately. That goes for amendments, that goes for releases, that goes for claims. So that way it's a highly digitized workflow, uh, but also the actual uh, documents or the actual um yeah data set for the for the surety bond are are digitized as such um this is in a nutshell how it works what i said there are many use cases um thinkable but at least i hope to to give you a way of um approach that um, that we can cover on uh, on our system and then the last one and yeah what i what i said before we we strongly believe the beneficiary is crucial in in digitizing um, the end-to-end -end, uh, workflows uh, we closely work together uh, with some large beneficiaries so obb the austrian railways is uh, is a leading example if you ask me uh, they receive over thousands of guarantees a year um, they literally say it's a nightmare to handle all these incoming guarantees from all these different guarantors and i've seen the list there are a lot of them um, so what they started doing what they build up is a project to digitize all their incoming guarantees now that's not a big bang that's a incremental process that's a step-by-step -step approach where they want to work closely together with the guarantors um, and closely together with their suppliers where they say, listen up, going forward, we want to have digital guarantees. For a period of time, we still accept physical guarantees, but there will be an end to it. So you better find the guarantors that can provide us the digital um, guarantee or the digital documents, because simply uh, we cannot process all these physical uh, and paper-based guarantees anymore. Uh, so for them, it's a way to streamline uh, that receiving side and really focus on the actual uh, bond that they receive to make sure that that is all in, in order and all in place. Um, and by doing that, they, yeah, they increase the quality um, of their business. They increase the, they improve the, the relationships with their customers um, by simply focusing on that more than, than on actually digitizing what has been issued physically. Um, now, looking at the time, Richard, do I have uh, two, three minutes to show the system actually in working? If the audience would like that very much, Walter. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. then I'll... So here you can see I am logged in as a guarantor uh, if they use the, the UI. Um, this is the use case where the guarantor or the surety receives the application, for example, via their, their portal or via email. We don't interfere there, but the guarantor is able to issue it digitally to the um, beneficiary. So they simply provide the reference, the issuance date, the document they want to attach, potentially additional attachments like release letters, uh, examples, uh, fee schemes, etc. 
select the guarantor, Allianz Trade, who was the applicant, who is the beneficiary, and some basic information. This way they can issue the guarantee digitally to the beneficiary. Right now it's issued on the guarantee vault and the beneficiary is notified. Dear beneficiary, there is an is uh, a guarantee and surety issued in your favor. Please go in and, and access it. And I can show it to you from the beneficiary side where I receive a notification. And I have here access to the issued guarantee. I can preview it, I can download it, uh, and I have the actions here available to interact with it. So if the time comes and I need to release it, I can say, dear surety, please release this guarantee because the underlying business is finished. I can provide supporting documents, sign documents, whatever is necessary there, provide some additional information. But this way also the returning of the guarantee isn't a hassle anymore. It is simply living on our system. Um, they can interact with it if the time has come. They don't have to look for the physical paper. It's simply send off the request for a release. It's simply send off to the surety. And they can process it and release the actual guarantee as such. Now, I don't have more time to, to show you more. Of course, there's really a lot in the system that we are capable of doing uh, and providing and supporting. Um, but I believe uh, in a nutshell, it's it's clear all parties are involved. Um, and that way, we hope to contribute to a further digitization of the, uh, the surety business as such. That was it from my end, uh, Richard, back to you. Thank you very much, Wouter. And if I can, uh, can invite Kai and uh, Greg back to the, uh, uh, the, uh, the spotlights, please. Because I've got a number of questions, but let's start with something I found interesting. Michelle tells us bond digitalization happened as far back as 2001. The Mexican bonding market being one of the first ones and ahead of their time. Aviasadora Insurgentes, which is now a, uh, an Acerta Group company, and Fianzas Monterey being at the forefront. This is just to ground us that people have been working at this for, for a number of years. We just needed to catch on big time, right? Now, if we go to the questions, one question for Greg specifically. Uh, how much technical expertise and infrastructure will clients need to transact with NFT bonds? And is this a concern for service takeoff in the next five years? That, that's definitely been top, can you hear me? Can, that's definitely been top of mind. Um, and the answer is that to get set up to participate in the Canopy network and, and to post bonds on the blockchain and, and then to receive them, we would all be looking to our system administrators. So those of us like Liberty Mutual that have our own system, our IT department will look at, they call them APIs that will be given to them to give the instructions of how to post and also message. Um, for those that subscribe to uh, a system provided by a third party, uh, which many sureties and many brokers do, they would look to those systems to actually set them up on the uh, blockchain. And then the, the process of minting uh, the bond documents as a NFT, that all takes place by, uh, well, essentially risk stream. So that's all done on the blockchain. The individual participants don't do that themselves. That's the beauty of it is that this works with the systems like Kai mentioned at Aon and Walter mentioned that he has and, and the digital systems, Mexico, around the world. Indeed, they, there have been digital bonding solutions for over 20 years, but there are many of them now. And as a surety, for example, we have to log in and train, participate in each of those to support surety bonding around the world. And the idea here is that we would prefer to use our system and interact with other systems but the those that those that you know want to use the systems again a system of choice and uh and the processes can remain exactly the same just as uh was mentioned with dbs that you know go from the 
from uh, the execution clear to the beneficiary and, and the release. So it's fair to summarize as Holland, your systems guy, get it set up and it's as easy as one, two, three. Is that it? There you go. <laughs> there we go. Then we've got a question from the European side, and I'm looking at Walter and Kai for this one. Constantine asks, what's the legal basis for digital bonds in Europe? Would you care to share your views on this? Um, yeah, I can kick it off, Kai, and then uh, fill me in uh, on that one. It's uh, it's a question with many many angles how you how you look at it. Um, definitely, digital bonds are as valid as paper-based bonds, as long as they comply with um, European, but also local law and, and jurisdictions. So that means if there is a qualified signature necessary, like in Austria, uh, you need to have a qualified electronic signature on, uh, on the digital document as such. Um, whether it's a paper-based or a digital form, in that regard, it doesn't matter. It needs to hold up in court that you can prove that the um, agreements that you make with each other are proven as such. Do you have anything to add to that? I'm not sure if it's really the answer to that question because it's quite quite a broad question, but it's a good question. Yeah, that's that's a view from 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 from, from the issuing side, and I, and I totally agree. But maybe maybe you, you could we also have to to uh, discuss the point from how to to send it on a digital way to the beneficiary and. Uh, of course, there are the, what I mentioned, the data protection and, and the secure transfer uh, necessary uh, with, with the European and local uh, laws uh, that are in common there. But, but I, I guess um, that's it. Quite apart from the European side, Greg, I've understood that a blockchain based system makes it a lot easier to prove the authenticity of the bond is that true yes that's the whole idea and 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 our hope uh, we don't expect this to be an overnight conversion of five million paper bonds to immediately be digital but to the point that that's being made by the um, panel here we we hope that even those beneficiaries that today require a wet a paper bond with a wet signature that by showing the backup of the authenticated bond on the blockchain, they'll begin to become more comfortable with it. And eventually, our hope is that they'll, um, where, where power of attorney um, uh, applies, for example, in the United States, they'll, they'll begin to relax the requirement to attach the power of attorney because they know that it exists digitally. And then followed by the bond itself, or, or perhaps both. But uh, but it will be a process. It will take time. But we believe that with more and more uh, participation by beneficiaries, acceptance of the digital bond, particularly the NFTs on the blockchain, uh, there'll be a, a, a faster movement than has happened in the last 20 years towards accepting and relying just on the digital bonds and getting rid of the papers for the paper bonds. I mean, for the reasons that Kai mentioned, for example, uh, the timeliness or the, the time that it takes to do the bonds and the time it takes to deliver the bonds. And that ties in very nicely to a question that Tyler asked, how will you determine which beneficiaries to approach and how widely do you expect this process to be accepted by the beneficiaries? Any of you gentlemen, would, you know, would you like to share something on that? I would like to start with a, with a view of uh, the acceptance of the beneficiaries. Uh, and I guess it, it, in Germany or Europe, it, it's, it's, very, it, it's the most important thing of the total digital world. Because if the, if the uh, beneficiaries don't ex, uh, ex, uh, accept the, 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 the digital uh, bond, then this discussion and all the thoughts we are all taking on this are are, are nothing. Uh, and I guess this this the, the, the whole solution will will, will take a, a, a very very long step uh, if if um, the um, the public sector will will uh, join this this uh, solution and say. Okay, we as a beneficiary uh, would accept uh, a digital solution 
And with this, the the trust in this in the whole process will will grow and grow, and, and I think that that will will will, will roll up the, the total total process. Um, but but I would like to hear other voices from you. Yeah, I think that's 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 a very valid point, uh, Kai. Yeah, we we can make it as beautiful as we want, but the reality is that still uh, there are beneficiaries in the market that simply want to have a physical guarantee. They want to feel the paper, they want to smell the paper. For them, that is the source of truth. Um, now that will take time. That will take education. That will get. And they need to get to um, to know this new form of uh, of distribution and to get acquainted with it. Um, so it's definitely a project for the uh, with a long breath, uh, so to say. Um, but having that said, we we do see a um, a large shift, I would almost say, where especially the larger organizations and also the semi or maybe even public organizations say this this is not handleable by us anymore. It's getting out of hand. It's getting ridiculously uh, expensive to manage all these paper-based things. And why would I get a paper when I, in my personal life, have everything digital? Like, why isn't it happening in my in my professional life where I have everything in my personal life? So also that comes now closer and closer together where if we join forces and we need to cooperate there and we need to tell the story jointly, there is value in digitization. Um, also, these reluctant beneficiaries will definitely take the step in the right direction. Having that said, we always have front runners that really pave the way for the rest. For, for the blockchain solution, I'll, I'll, I'll mention, as I shared in my slides, we have a very specific strategy on how and when and who to engage in terms of beneficiaries. And it really uh, hinges on the solution providers, much like uh, DBS, that there are solutions today that are accepted by beneficiaries. And our strategy is let's start with them going hand in hand with the solution providers. And together, then we explain why this is even better uh, than, than what they're relying on and accepting today. Because uh, conversely, we don't want to add confusion to the industry where they say, well, you know, we already have this solution why do we need why do you you need why do we need yours and so we want to start with those and then expand out from there which is very closely aligned to a question that michael put to us he says one can hear from the presentations there are too many standards and we need to overcome that let's make a new one now greg am i listening to you correctly and saying we're not making a new one we're hooking them up that's correct and um and indeed they're they're is a global standard that we developed as an industry 20 years ago again global and that's a core data standard that's still applicable today we've also been working as an industry to develop um, uh, financial data standards through xprl so there really aren't uh they're, they're, those are the key standards we want to work with and those will work with the blockchain but this blockchain initiative it's not new standards it's just a methodology to uh have the different systems communicate and had a common source, if you will, for all stakeholders in the surety ecosystem to go to, to facilitate that exchange of information. And I'll add that some of the capabilities that were mentioned by Walter and, and Kai, uh, claims, uh, release of bonds, all those we anticipate could be added into the blockchain solution. This is the foundation we're setting. First and foremost, let's get the bonds on the network and onto the blockchain. And then it really opens up the door for all kinds of capabilities um, uh, to add on to that. Now, having said that, Kai, Dylan just threw you a curveball. How will the role of the broker change with the use of, for instance, DVS, uh, the digital vault, uh, vault, vault services? <laughs> How will, the, uh, how will it change? I, I'm not sure if it changed anything. Uh, I, I don't think that uh, the, the role of the broker, or we have to talk about the role of the broker. What does the broker do actually in my eyes or in my, in my, in my function as uh, uh, um, the broker for, for our clients in the DAF region? Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not the one who's uh, carrying the, the, uh, the applicants to the to the uh, surety provider 
I'm I'm not having any any uh, comments or anything to do with with um, uh, asking for a bond. Uh, I'm I'm the troubleshooter. I'm I'm the guy who who supports uh, our clients in negotiation with with the carriers. Uh, so from this side, I, I guess it it. it it's it's not a, in my eyes it's not a question uh, of the if, if the role uh, is changing not at all uh, I, I guess it it can support us much more because uh, processes will go faster um, because uh, there are no no discussions about when does the bond with the post come at the end and can you support of course I can support I can I, ca I can call the the insurance company and ask when was it issued which way uh, and so on but but that, that are that are um not the things i i want to do as a broker as a broker i want to be the troubleshooter at the end i want to be the advisor of our client and and take him with me in all strategic uh, decisions uh, he, he has to do uh, in, in regard of the surety business so this is something that supports us on the operational side but uh, I don't think that the, the broker uh, is, is on the operational side. He's more on the strategic side. So it's it's some kind of support. And uh, that's why Walter and, and I had, had also discussions uh, before uh, where, where we can support and each other. This question comes up quite a bit, um, and, and it's a valid concern. Does this disintermediate the broker? And my response is not at all. Again, we're trying to model after what was done for stocks and bonds and think about it today we can all as individuals or corporations choose the system we want and there's a broker behind that and we can interact with the broker just like uh, uh did in the old paper days uh, uh it, it it it's really the the choice so the, as uh, kai mentioned this just helps enable and makes the process more efficient but in no way does it uh, remove the broker from the equation or um, diminish the value that the broker uh, plays in the ecosystem for surety bonding and guarantees? Thanks. That's very clear. There, we were talking, I was talking at the beginning about bottlenecks and the legal environment could be a bottleneck. And this is what Dipika is asking. Are the regions or countries where it's been difficult to implement digital surety bonds depending on the location of the client, the beneficiary, or the surety. Would you be aware of any of those countries or regions? No, not so by heart. We we have done the uh, legal opinions uh, within the European Union. Uh, we haven't come across any um, outlier as such or any blocking uh, regulation in that matter. What you do see is when um, things go cross uh, continent if so from Europe to the USA or uh, vice versa like there could be some uh, discussions on interpretations on how certain things should or could work having that said what we also see is still the indirect form of uh, guarantees or, or sometimes sureties where a local guarantor is selected to issue it locally in their digital form so if we talk about Mexico it could make sense to have it issued digitally by a Mexican um, guarantor as such um but yeah it's um i haven't come across it but maybe uh, greg kai you have you have a different um different experience no i i totally agree and I, and i think i mean we're in the in the beginning of this process uh and and it takes time uh even if it's a blockchain solution or, or a, a web interface form like dbs so we're in the evolution and we will see what leads to the to the global goal to to support our clients and and uh, the beneficiaries and what it will be accepted we don't know it today uh, but we can show up which solutions we can have and uh, we as a broker can support them to to uh, uh, yeah support our clients the best way and 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 give this feedback to to the insurance uh, companies or, or or initiatives like ICESA. Looking at the clock, gentlemen, one last question for each of you in two sentences. What does the digital surety world look like in 2025? Greg, what do you think? 
I'll use one word, promising. <laughs> That's a good one. Kai, what about you? I, I guess we will make process, as I as stated ju just the last uh, last sentence, I, it, it will make process and, and two, two years is not too far. Uh, so so it, it will make process and, I, and I, I'm really totally convinced that uh, the the digital form of a bond uh, or the digital process will make process and the beneficiaries will accept it more and more. We see it in the German market uh, that the the uh, that the beneficiaries accept the digital form more and more. And so I'm, I'm totally convinced that we may make every day, every, every month, further steps toward a digital uh, digitalized, digitalized world uh, in the surety business. Sorry about that. Walter, what does it look like? Yeah, it will be highly collaborative. Like digitization is a non-competitive space, so it's in everybody's interest. So across the different sureties, across the different applicants, across the different beneficiaries, there is a lot of collaboration to get this thing really speed up and happening. Well, thank you so much, gentlemen, and I hope the audience will share my enthusiasm for the outcome of this discussion. It adds to my understanding, um, and I think that is what the Surety Week is made for, right? Knowledge transfer. Now, one of my takeaways here is that we're not alone. It is collaborative. There are such things as banks that uh, compete in our space, and we might work together. Taking the perspective of a beneficiary, uh, we're important and we're important to, it's important to serve that client and to give them the product, what they want, as they want it, with the maximum amount of transparency and ease of use, because that'll do our industry a lot of good. With that, I would like to thank the members of the panel, Greg, Kai and Bowser for this fascinating discussion and i would love to uh, to thank the audience for your interest because this is what gets us out of bed in the morning uh, at the icsa secretariat and with that this concludes the surety week of 2023 our trade credit insurance week is planned for october 2nd to 5th and we hope to see many of you there but also of course before that time now, remember, the handouts are available uh, from this screen. So spread the word, please. That's what it's meant for. This is Isisa signing off from Schiphol Airport. We wish you health, happiness, and good business. Thank you very much. <laughs>